Welcome back to another video. My name's Lachlan and today I want to talk about us being all that little bit more sustainable within the kitchen. And more importantly, trying not to waste any food. So last night I cleaned out my fridge at home. This is everything that I've found. So I've got a lot of unused vegetables and random bits and pieces some stuff that's looking a bit sad like this kale. Well, I've never seen happy kale. Um, some cabbage, onions, almost stale flatbreads. I've got a random piece of cheese, some butter. So I've just got some random stuff here. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we can use these, mix some stuff together to create some really yummy dishes that might act as a snack or as a meal. And because we're using all these things that would ordinarily potentially just get left until they go off, or you might throw them out, we're technically having a meal for free. So an absolute bonus, everything will be super tasty as well. So if you come with me, I'll take you through it. And as I said, free meals, happy days. So I've grabbed a few plates and normally when I do this at home, I like to grab everything out at once and knock this over in the one hit because otherwise they'll end up back in the fridge. They'll probably just go off then and then we'll end up throwing them out. So I like to sort of brainstorm this quickly and figure out exactly what I'll do. So here I've got um, some onions. I'll put those together. Cabbage, they can also go together. Kale, some celery that's very soft and limp. Uh, we've got some garlic in here as well. So it's perfect, that can go. I've got this eschalot here, perfect as well. And I've got a tiny bit of time left, so half of that I'll pop here as well. I'm thinking what I might do is I'll chop everything here really finely. I'll cook it off in a pan. Maybe add some chicken stock or some butter or something like that, just to get a really nice sort of caramelized, braised, cabbagey thing and have that on some flatbread. So that can be lunch or afternoon tea or something. So that's all together. First one done. Excellent. I'll pop that there. Now left over, as you can see, I've basically wiped out most of my tray. So this is fantastic. I've got some carrots and some pumpkin. Not much pumpkin, not really much I can do here. But what I might do is I'll pop both of these into the steam oven and we can make a dip. So they can go together. I actually don't have any crackers at the moment, so I'm actually going to cut this on the mandolin nice and thin. I'll dehydrate this in our warming drawer and we'll have beetroot crackers. So perfect. Uh, a bit of lemon zest can go on the dip, that's no worries at all. Uh, look at this, I've got another piece of time, so that just shows how organised my crisper was. Um, I might not use all of this, but this should still keep for another few days, so if I make a bolognese or something throughout the week, I can use that up. And all that I'm left with now is my random piece of cheese. Um, so I think from memory this is a black pepper cheddar or, or something random like that. I might actually just grate this over my braised uh, cabbage mixture with my toast. So I'll pop that there. You can see here we've got nothing left. Two nice snacks. And as I said, everything's basically for free because we hadn't had any plans for this food previously. So let's get to it, we can get cooking and we'll have some yummy food, healthy, and it's all easy. I've got a pan preheating an induction setting six. I've peeled my onions and my garlic. So now I'm just going to chop everything up really nice and fine, pop into the pan with my random piece of butter. I might need to add some olive oil and we'll see how it goes. Once this starts to sweat down, I'll add some stock and reduce this down. So I reckon this might take maybe an hour, maybe a little bit longer, nice and slow, get some really nice in-depth flavors and then we can pop it on toast. So watch me chop all this stuff up and we can get cooking. Okay, so I literally just went berserk, chopped this into a million pieces. I don't really mind how you chop it up as long as we've got it in nice small bits. Uh, it doesn't really matter because we'll be cooking it off. And as I said, I'm just using up things in, this, uh, in the fridge. So if you have similar things, it doesn't matter what it is. If you think it'll work, give it a crack because it'll definitely work and it will definitely be tasty. Nothing much can really go wrong. So I've got my pan here on induction setting six. That was preheating as I was chopping. 
I'm going to pop some butter in and all of these chopped up veggies. Now I've got a lot here as you can see, but this should wilt down quite quickly so it's not too bad. Just try and get it in as best as you can at the start. I've also got some of this thyme which I picked, whack that on top, and we'll just stir this, you know, every so often now until it softens up. Then I'll add in some chicken stock and we can really just slowly cook this, bring it right down, make it nice and rich, and then eat it on our toast. Okay, so I've just popped my cabbage and onion mixture to the side so it can cook away uh, without making too much noise. Now I'm just going to get everything ready for this dip. So my eschalot I've just peeled. I'm just going to hack at that into a steam tray it goes. Carrots, once again, skin on the whole lot. Not going to worry about cut, chopping any pieces off or any skin, anything like that. The same with the pumpkin. I've got a few blemishes appearing, but nothing that we can't eat. So I'll chop these up into chunks as well. Try get these sizes somewhat similar. I have a clove of garlic that can go in as well. So now I'll just steam these at 100 degrees. Um, I'm going to steam this for about 40 minutes. So the longer we do this, the more sweetness that will come out of it and therefore the better tasting dip. So I'll pop that in. As that goes in, I'll then actually cut this on the mandolin and our beetroot chips can dehydrate at the same time. Okay, so it's time to jump onto our beetroot chips now. So I've got my beetroot here and a mandolin. Now, when we start off with this, you'll just need to slightly eyeball the mandolin and get this to a good thickness. So you'll probably have to do a couple of test cuts just to see where it's at. So that's a little bit too thick. Just slightly change that, although I can still use those. That's 100% fine, no, no issues there. And now, I'll just check again. Yep, that's really nice. So. When I hold this up to the light, I can just start to see through this beetroot. So that's a really nice thickness. You don't want it too thin because it will dehydrate completely and then become too brittle. So this is probably oh, two to three millimeters thick, I would say. So now we'll just cut this all up. Watch your fingers. Keep them nice and straight and hold this beetroot in the palm of your hand. And once you get to that point where you don't think you can safely progress, stop. But now from this beetroot, I've got a really nice um, amount of slices. These will turn into crackers uh, really, really easily. So all I'm going to do with these now is I'll lay them onto a baking tray with a bit of baking paper. I'll pop one to the warming drawer. If I have any spare, I'll pop them into one of the ovens just to see the difference, although it should be exactly the same. These will probably take roughly one to two hours. It will depend on how fresh it is, also the thickness that you do. So there's variables, but obviously we continue to cook these or dehydrate them until they're crispy. Once they are done, store them in an airtight container and these will keep for a couple of weeks. No doubt about that at all. So I'll get these in, we can forget about them and these will be a fantastic accompaniment with our dip. So whilst I have my cabbage and onions cooking and also my dip uh, steaming away, I've gone into my fridge and here I have a bottle of white wine and a bottle of red wine. However, in each of these bottles, I probably have four or five different types of each. I basically get my little bits from my old bottle, pour them into one, and I normally use this as cooking wine. It does use up a lot of space, having excess bottles of wine and you may not get around to using it so often. So one of the best tips from that we used to do in the restaurant was we'd actually reduce down all of the old wine left over from service. So basically, get all those same wines, pour them into one pot like so. So whilst I have, you know, almost the full bottles here, there's probably seven or eight bottles with different styles of wine within this. But I'm gonna pop these into a pot both and basically reduce this by five or six times. Now this is great, uh, it's a great tip because in a restaurant we would do this and then if we were required to get the flavour of a wine in a dish, 
we can actually add this towards the end sort of more sporadically and get that really nice tailored taste. Whereas when we add it at the start, we need to reduce it down and you have a little bit less control. So definitely grab some of your excess wine at home. If you need to save it up so you've got a better amount like this before you do so, that's probably the best way to work it. And I'm going to reduce both of these wines down to about 100 ml. I then can store those in a small container in your fridge, grab out a tablespoon or so when you require, and this will really lift your everyday cooking to that next level. And as I said, it's one of those tips from the restaurant that the everyday person doesn't see, but it gives you the absolute best results and excellent taste every time. So here I have my cabbage, onion, kale, you know, all those random vegetable mixture. This has been cooking now for about 40 minutes, I would say, and you can see it's really reduced down. It's wilted quite a lot and we're getting some really nice caramelizing happening. The smell is fantastic. We've added a bit of salt also. What I'm going to do now is I've got about uh, a cup's worth of uh, chicken stock. So I'm simply going to pour that all into that. So now we've made this extremely wet, but I'll literally now just leave this on the cooktop, stir it every five to 10 minutes or so, reduce this stock almost completely until we've got a really wet, um, but thick sort of cabbage mixture. Once that's done, you can spoon that onto toast, have it in a quiche. Uh, it's really endless how you use this, but it'll be rich, tasty, and something so underrated like cabbage can really lift to something that's, I think, one of the most tastiest vegetables. Coming back to our dip now, here I've got my carrots, the pumpkin, the eschalot, and the garlic, and I've steamed these now for roughly an hour at 100 degrees. As I said before, the longer we do this, uh, the sweeter it becomes, and this is all just leftover bits. We've got a bit of oxidising happening with the pumpkin, but we can still eat that. There's no worries there at all. I'm going to transfer this now to a blender or a food processor or anything like that. I've got some toasted cumin seeds. I know that I also have some mascarpone cheese in my fridge I need to use up and uh, some tahini, that sort of stuff as well. So kind of add what you please to it, play around the flavours, whatever you think will work. We'll come back and we'll serve this with the beetroot chips. So we're almost done everyone. First of all, I want to show you these uh, wines we've had reducing. So as you saw, I poured in essentially a whole bottle of each into each pot. And now I've reduced that down only about 20 minutes or so, but we literally have probably 70 ml. So now this can sit in the fridge and whenever you need to, you can grab some for dressing, to finish off a dish, anything like that. The alcohol's already cooked off. It's gonna be super smooth and easy on the palate, so it's a great thing to have on hand to really lift those dishes that need that extra bit of uh, bit of flavour to really get the best out of them. The wine as well, the white wine I should say, you can see that's gone almost like a really nice caramel colour, so it's really intensified the flavour, but at the same time it's made it a flavour that's a lot more palatable to eat as well. So yeah, as I said, about 70 ml of each, they can go in the fridge, no waste, but this is something that you definitely use. So once again, it's, you know, it's saving you space, it's minimizing the waste, everything is coming along really nicely. This is our vegetables. So the ones I just took back into the kitchen and blended, uh, basically we added some mascarpone cheese, about a tablespoon of tahini, then it was literally the cumin and some salt, that was it. So gave a really good blend, taste uh, as you go to see what you need to balance it with. The skin was left on the pumpkin as you saw, it. also the carrots, but you wouldn't even know now. I've split that, some sesame seeds on top, some parsley, and we're serving those with the pumpkin crisps that you saw before. Sorry, the beetroot crisps, I should say. So, the beetroot crisps are behind me. So these have been done, I actually did them two different ways. I did one tray in a warming drawer and one tray in a combi steam oven, and they're both exactly the same, to be honest, which is great. So, both of them I had set to 80 degrees, and there's no difference between the two, which is great to know if you have either appliance that you can do them either way and you get the same fantastic result. So I've got a nice plate here. It's really great if you just grab a handful of these and let them fall however they want to. And you saw the massive pile of beetroot that I had at the start of this when I shaved it fresh. And now all they have is a small plate of chips. So, 
a dip that, you know, from all those leftover vegetables, some crackers there, you know, from a vegetable as well. So we've got a really nice uh, snack there for a couple of people, uh, probably three or four comfortably, I would say. And then finally, our cabbage. So we saw I had the cabbage, the kale, celery, uh, some onion as well. I had a, a really good random mix. That's been cooking down now with that stock for another 20 minutes or so. And look how nice and caramelized and rich this is looking. So it smells unreal. I'm really looking forward to tucking into this. Before I do though, I've got some Lebanese bread or some flatbread that I also had in the fridge. I'm just going to give these a really light uh, drizzle of oil. Quickly on a griddle pan, we'll give these, you know, a minute or so on each side. And then we'll be able to pop this on top and, and serve it. So, going to be super, super tasty. I'll show you this when it's finished and then we can wrap everything up. So these flatbreads have taken about a minute on each side. We've got some nice charring, we've gone really crispy, almost like a cracker. But as I said, I'm just using up some leftover bread that was almost stale in the fridge anyway. So feel free to use this on anything. I'm going to bring over my cabbage now. Look how dark and rich that is. And simply just spoon this on top. It is going to be pretty intense, but I love rich flavors. So I'm just going to pop that on. Follow this on all three. And even on a piece of fresh sourdough or something as well. I mean, there's so many ways you can use this. Fry an egg, have some bacon, toast, you know, it's, it covers all the food groups pretty much, I would say. We've got our cheddar cheese that I mentioned at the very start, so a black pepper uh, cheddar. I'm going to microplane from a nice height, just microplane this over the top. Oh, it's gone a bit soft, sitting on the bench, but that's okay. Let's microplane it over. A few big clumps fall, I'll pick those up. And that there is going to be a very tasty, decadent, uh, cabbage, braised toast thing, whatever you want to call it. But here we've got a really nice selection of food from items in our fridge that probably wouldn't have made it any other time. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's video on being a little bit more sustainable in the kitchen, being mindful of the waste. Um, it's something that we can all do very easily. It's just definitely our mindsets. And hopefully this gives you a few ideas to grab some of those items in your pantry and in your fridge, use them up, and they can give you some fantastic results. So thanks for watching. Please keep an eye out for some more videos, and I'll see you next time.